Today, we are looking at the health sector, which is up 19% in the last one year, as opposed to the S&P 500, which is up only 14%. Health sector is one of the three sectors that is set to gain in 2022. The other two sectors are the energy sector and the financial sector. We'll divide today's video into two parts. The first part, we are focused on what is the outlook for the health sector and why you should pay special attention to the health sector. And then the second part, we'll take three ETFs, which are among the most popular sector ETFs for healthcare. Number one would be XLV. Number two would be Vanguard's VHT. And number three would be Fidelity's FHLC. So if you get any value out of today's video, leave that like. And without further ado, let's dive in. Healthcare, unlike other sectors like energy, finance, utilities, is not cyclical in nature. Healthcare is a very important aspect of human beings. We cannot separate health from our day-to-day -day thought process. Health is part of our daily routine. The national healthcare expenditure has grown over 9% in 2020 to $4.1 trillion. Now granted, healthcare is not the most exciting field when it comes to retail investment and it sometimes takes a back stage for retail investors. We are more focused on metaverse, electric vehicles, sustainable energy, and we kind of forget that healthcare industry is actually one of the most important industries in our lives. So with that said, here are some of these interesting facts that you should know on why healthcare is very important. This is the chart for the last 10 years of global health innovation funding. Back in 2012, they only funded $2.3 billion in the innovation funding for health. But look Look at 10 years later in 2021, they had funded $44 billion. And this is also clearly visible where venture capitalists are putting more money in the healthcare and it has gone beyond from your just typical telehealth to more of remote monitoring, AI first products, digital therapeutics and more. Now prior to the latest health crisis that we have, we usually used to go to the doctor physically, but with this new onset of the digital age that now we are focused not on just going to the doctor physically but on all the digital aspects of a patient's journey. You now have digital therapeutics, consumer wearables, connected biometric sensors, smartphone cameras, clinical trial tools which are in-home, in-home connected virtual assistants, telemedicine and virtual vis physical visits, personal health records which are available online for you, web-based interactive programs to know more about how you can improve your health, care team, emails and text messages. Now you can reach out to these providers through email and text and then you also have health system disease management apps and you have consumer mobile apps. The healthcare is slowly shifting from being a physical on-site location to more of a digital based offering and these are some of the areas which are just impacted. This is from the front end what you see as a consumer but to support all these infrastructure there are so many different types of companies that come in together to provide one of these products and offering. And this is why it is very important to understand that when we talk about healthcare, it's not just your typical going to a doctor, filing a claim. There is so much going behind the scene. There are so many products and services that a healthcare industry has. There are many subsectors within that sector. So healthcare sector is a very important sector that you should pay special attention to. If that technology trend did not convince you, here are a couple of stats that might help you make that decision. Number one is the number of Americans over 65 is expected to go from 17% of the population to 22%. That's a big jump. The Medicare spending grew from 3.5% to 829.5 billion in 2020 or 20% of the total national healthcare expenditure. The Medicaid spending grew from 9.2% to 671.2 billion in 2020, which is equivalent to 16% of the total NHE. Now, if that convinced you that healthcare is an important aspect of our life and maybe it is an important aspect of our portfolio, then what we can do is we can look at the top three ETFs in the healthcare sector, which provides you exposure to a ton of companies in the healthcare space, along with different subsectors within that sector. First one we are going to take a look at it is from the State Street Corporation, SPDR, XLV. XLV is clearly the market leader when it comes to the healthcare sector ETF. The closing price of XLV was $136.99 at the time of this recording. XLV dominates the US healthcare segment 
On practically every measure, the fund provides exposure to companies in pharmaceutical, healthcare equipments and supplies, healthcare providers, services, biotech, life sciences, tools and services, and healthcare technology industries. XLV is the oldest in the segment. As such, it is used widely for strategic or tactical positions. Since XLV is both cap weighted and fishes only from the S&P 500, it tilts heavily towards the mega cap. For focus exposure to leading healthcare names, XLV is tough to beat. The expense ratio is 0.10, which is very typical of the SPDR brand. The asset under management is about $35.24 billion. So that's a lot of money, which is on being managed by this fund. The average daily volume is 1.97 billion. And when we will compare with the Vanguard and the Fidelity, you'll see the difference. The market cap is about $196.5 billion. Price to earning ratio is 26.29. We also get dividends from this ETF and the dividend ratio is about 1.41%. The number of holdings in this is about 64. They are much more concentrated as opposed to the Vanguard or other ETFs like Fidelity. Similar to the healthcare sector ETF, I have also done a full analysis of the financial sector ETF, which is the XLF. Check it out right here. Jumping onto the performance of the ETF, in the last one month, this ETF is up about 1.59%. Year to date, it's down 6%. One year, it's up 16.47%. Three years return 14.86. Five years is 13.51. And in 10 years, which is 15.53. This ETF was launched back in 1998. So it's about more than 20 years that this ETF has been live. These are some of very good returns for a period of 10 years. If you had 15% return on average every single year, it's a great return. Turn. This is exactly what you look for a total market index fund. XLV is totally focused on the US company, so there is no additional international exposure that you can get. Top 10 holdings are United Health Group, you have Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, AbV, Ellie Lilly & Company, Thermo Fisher Science, Abot Labs, Merck, Dan Heyer Corporation and Bristol Myers Squibb. A lot of these healthcare companies that are in the top 10 holdings are also very popular with dividend investors. Moving on, to the Vanguard's version of the health sector ETF, which is VHT. The closing price of VHT at the time of this recording was $254.92. So VHT offers broad exposure to healthcare companies in the US. The fund holds healthcare firms stretching across multiple industries from the broadly defined healthcare space. The fund's large basket stems from the total market universe. The fund diversifies its holding by applying limits on the regulated investment companies such that no group entity exceeds 25% of the index weight and the aggregate weight of the issuers with over 5% weight in the index are capped at 50% of the portfolio. VHT has limited transparency as holdings are only published monthly. The index is rebalanced quarterly. The expense ratio is 0.1. The asset under management is $16 billion, which is approximately half of what is being managed under XLV. The average daily volume is only 67 million. The market cap of this ETF is $170 billion. The price to earning ratio is 33.65, which is higher than XLV. Dividend yield of 1.25%, which is lower than the XLV as well. Now, the number of holdings in this ETF is 440 holdings, very typical for Vanguard. This is a very typical number of holdings for Vanguard ETFs. They generally add a lot of companies in the ETF. You can check out my last video on Vanguard's energy sector ETF, which was VDE. It's right here. Year to date, it's down minus 8%. In one year, it has returned 8%. Three years, 13.66%. Five year, 13.21%. And 10 year, 15.54%. So you only get exposure to US companies with this ETF as well. Top 10 holdings of this are United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Abvi, Thermo Fisher & Science, Abbott Lab, Ellie Lilly & Company, Merck & Company, Dan Hare Corporation, Bristol Myers constitute about 44% of the ETF. The third ETF on our list is Fidelity's healthcare version, which is ticker symbol FHLC. The closing price was $65.43. FHLC casts a wide net across the entire healthcare market in the US, which captures over 300 large, mid-size and small cap companies and spanning more than 10 subsectors. This diversification gives the vanilla fund less exposure to big pharma companies that, that dominate the market and more 
exposure to the sectors like drug and retail insurance. The expense ratio is only 0.08% as opposed to 0.1%. Asset under management is relatively very less. It's only $2.7 billion. The average volume is also very less. It's only about 11.44 million. The market cap is very similar though. It's about $170 billion. The price to earning ratio is also very high. It's 34.16. And the distribution yield is similar to Vanguard's ETF, which is 1.25. It is because Vanguard also has over 400 companies in the ETF. This holds about 472 companies in the ETF. Year to date, this ETF is also down 8%. But in one year, they gave you 8%, three years, 13.62, 5 years, and 13.17. Since this ETF is relatively new and it has not completed 10 years, we don't have that data today. It gives you 99.99% exposure to US and 0.01 exposure to United Kingdom. But the top 10 holdings are the same. United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, AbbVie, Ellie Lilly & Company, Thermo Fisher Science, Abbott, Merck, Danaher and Bristol Myers Squibb, which constitute about 46% in the top 10 weighted cap. What are some of my main criteria for selecting an ETF? Well, number one is I look at the number of holdings that ETF has. Second is I look at the expense ratio. Third, I look at the dividend yield. And fourth, I look at the price of the ETF itself. Among the three, I personally like XLV. And the reason behind is if you look at the XLV, it has about 66 holdings, which is a much more concentrated position because the top 10 holdings in XLV is still 55%. Whereas even though VHT and FHLC has 400 plus companies, their top 10 holdings still has over 45%. So end of the day, those are the top 10 companies that are moving the price of the ETF up or down. XLV has outperformed VHT in one year, in three years, and then when it gets to five years and 10 years, the performance starts to balance each other. In one year, XLV has outperformed FHLC. Three years, it's winning. Five years, they are approximately getting to the same levels. And if you compare FHLC with VHT, the performance is very similar because they both hold very similar type of companies, both hold very similar number of companies in the ETF. Their expense ratio is not that much of a different. Their dividend yield is also very similar. So then it really comes down to you as an investor, which brand of ETFs do you personally personally like. Between the three, my vote goes to XLV because I'm more focused towards getting more concentrated position as well as higher dividend yield. So let me know in the comments which of these ETFs do you like in the healthcare sector or is there any other ETF that you actually invest in and I would be happy to take a look into it as well. So if you found any value out of today's video, don't forget to hit the like, click on subscribe and ring the bell notification. I will see you next time investor family but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.